In many interactive game applications, users are required to wait and trigger the selection input within a bounded time window with a selection cursor that is expected to be delayed. For example, a player can fire an arrow towards a balloon, control the jump of a character onto a water well, attack the minion with a finishing shot to get the most gold while minions are hitting each other, and dodge an enemy's attack when it is close so that the character can immediately fight back. In this research, we are interested in when users will typically perform selection in such tasks, can we accurately predict the selection accuracy for different targets and cursors, and what can we infer from this task about users' general selection behavior. I'm Di Feng Yu, I'm currently a postdoc at the University of Copenhagen. This work, entitled Modeling Temporal Target Selection, a perspective from a spatial correspondence, was done during my PhD at the University of Melbourne with co-authors Brandon, Andrew, Tillman, Eduardo, and George. Let's first try to decompose the task. Imagine the player in the space shooter again fires a bullet when the target is about to reach the cross here. So the player must anticipate when the target will reach the cross here based on its movement and trigger the selection within a certain time period for the bullet to hit the target. The bullet needs to travel for a certain time to reach the target, so the player must estimate its travel time based on previous experiences and take this delay into account to trigger the selection earlier. When the player performs a task repetitively with the input button, a selection distribution that records when the player typically triggered the selection is formed. From this distribution, we can then calculate the selection accuracy given the temporal target and the delayed selection cursor. So to predict the selection distribution and accuracy, we did not just want to put the data into a black box model, uh, which can produce accurate estimations but often without telling why it is the case. Instead, we want to explore ways to provide new, interpretable understanding of the general user selection behavior. Therefore, in this research, we took a perspective from spatial correspondence of the temporal target selection task. We hypothesize that users react to temporal factors including distance, width, and delay as how they treat the corresponding variables in spatial target selection. The temporal factors are leveraged as individual cues for users to decide when to execute the input, as the corresponding spatial factors are used to decide where to execute the input. The assumption is motivated by Welsh's theory of magnitude, Aiton. Aiton hypothesized that the space and time information are linked by a common metric for action. A shared analog magnitude system handles the spatial and temporal event inputs such as the distance and the duration uh, to produce model output, like an estimation of how fast and how long. So based on Aiton, the potential inference is that the corresponding spatial and temporal information as processed by a common mechanism can similarly influence perception and response. Based on this hypothesis, we consult the spatial target selection literature and find that there have been extensive evidence on how spatial distance and width influence user selection distribution. For example, many show the selection distribution of spatial target selection tasks could be approximated by Gaussian distribution. The center and standard deviation may be affected by both target width and movement amplitude, presumably in linear relationships. We thus build our model based on these empirical results. Since no research exists on how expected delay factor will influence spatial target selection, we assume it has a linear effect on both the center and the standard deviation of the selection distribution. To evaluate our models, we conducted our first study in a controlled VR experiment where we evaluated different model variants and compared the impact of the corresponding factors in temporal and spatial target selection. We demonstrated that the proposed models provide accurate prediction results and are robust under cross-validation tests. We further conducted a second MTurk-based online study to explore the generalizability of the models and conclusions. To achieve that, we built two GAM applications. A simplified space shooter GAM where users control a spaceship to shoot down enemies with different sizes, speeds, and distances. 
and a game that requires players to control different characters to get the gold coins across the river by jumping onto a moving block. We show that our models can still provide helpful estimations in scenarios with more complex visual encodings, larger parameter ranges, and less controlled environments. The studies have a lot of nitty-gritty, but let me present the key findings here. First, we find many common points between temporal and spatial target selection. The selection distributions are both Gaussian, and the center and the standard deviation of the distribution seems to be similarly influenced by temporal or spatial distances and widths. Second, we find the impact of the expected delay on the distribution center depends on the time duration for the users to react to the temporal target. Third, our results show that the impact of the temporal factor on selection distribution was not always linear. For example, if the temporal distance is too long, it will not always drag the distribution center linearly, but have a smaller and smaller effect on it as the center approaches the target edge. Overall, we envision our models and conclusions will help designers and users when encountering relevant scenarios. Furthermore, we hope our discussions and interpretations could inspire future theories that explain target selection behavior. Thanks for listening.